Right. Go on, who, who would you say is Joe Gallagher's best uh, best wins as a trainer? Yeah, maybe Barroso. Barroso? And who else? George Grove? Do we count the George Grove one? Nah, he only had one arm. Hey? Eh? He only had one arm, right? Yeah, exactly. So there's a question mark over that. Who would you say is anybody else's best win with him? What about Rick, Liam Smith? Who would you say his win, win is? The second one against Williams. Liam Williams, yeah. The second one, because the first one I thought was shambles uh, from his corner. Uh, no offence, Gary Lockett, but he should have been, been on that one, shouldn't he? To, to, to yeah. He wasn't paying attention there. Uh, so there isn't that many. Who would you say Quig's best win? Martinez. So there isn't that many great probably, win, yeah. eh? Yeah, probably Martinez. Yeah, Martinez who would have five losses. So there's not that many great wins on Joe Gallagher's CV, but yeah, he's had a Canelo fight. We we beefy. They've had the big the big WBSS money with Callum. He's had pay per view with Quig. So he he has been in there, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done good money out of boxing. Yeah. He's listen, Joe Gallagher. There's nobody as shrewd as Joe Gallagher. And so does he protect his fighters? Yeah, but when the ring, he don't protect them, does he? I mean, why didn't he stop that fight after the seventh? Do you know what? Oh, Would Mick Whaler stop that fight if it were any of his fighters? Yeah. Richard Towers would have, so why didn't he? Look, look at it from a different perspective, right? We live in a world now where if you get your fighter out of there, if you throw the towel in, if you pull him out, your fighter gets labelled a bottle job, quitter, loser. So you almost feel like shit. You know, what's Twitter going to say if I throw the towel in? And sometimes I think trainers are, are thinking about that instead of thinking about the safety of the fighter. Because he should have been out by round eight, to be honest with you. You reckon, yeah? He should have been, yeah, because he couldn't win. He couldn't wait fight. He never won a minute at fight, did he, or a second? Didn't have the power to hurt, Carol. That was the thing. Once you don't have the power to hurt someone, now he's going to stop you taking punishment. Yeah, yeah, you're right, mate. I just felt that Quig, in my opinion, took too many shots last night, yet again, like Valdez fight, and he came in heavy for that fight. And that proved that he were no good at the wakes. He were coming in even heavier than Feather and he couldn't do not with Valdez, could he? Yeah, he, you know, for me, he is a bantam slash super bantam. That is bigger. That, that's where he does his best work. Anything above that, man, their, their guys are bigger and stronger than he is. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel that uh, Quig... It, it, it left a bad taste in my mouth seeing a wheel Scott Quigg out. And before the fight, Herm were coming out with stuff like, we don't know what Scott Quigg's got left. I mean, this is an headline Sky fight. We don't know what he's got left. Fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, look. Look at what happened to Quigg after 18 months out of the ring, yeah? Yeah. And then look at... And then people try and tell you that, oh, 18 months out of the ring did wonders for Vladimir Klitschko when he fought Joshua. It made him fresher, made him better. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. 18 months out of the ring, but anyway, I don't care how good you are, it's just, it's bad. It is bad. Especially on that first fight back, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, uh, it, Look, Scott Quigg, right, he shouldn't have been in there last night. Not not headlining in that state. It was sad to see somebody come out. I mean, Scott Quigg's career, he's, done, he's overachieved, Danny, you'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's done his thing. He, you know, he should be proud of himself. He should be proud of himself. But it was sad to see him wheel him out like that. But it was sad to see him leave him after round seven, I thought. I thought they were going to pull him out after it's seven. Look, you're seven rounds down. There's five rounds to go. You need a knockout here, and to hope you don't lose any more rounds. So you need a knockout, and uh, it wasn't there. And save your guy for another day. Dennis saved Clinton Woods, didn't he? Look what he went on to do. But 
Quig's got no to do now, so they needed saving for the rest of his life, didn't they, really? And that's why it's a more important call in somebody's last fight than it is when they've got a future ahead of them, isn't it? Yeah, because Quigs just taking a lot of punishment. Like, remember, Fram it was a Frampton that broke his jaw? Yeah. Yeah, he's taking a lot of punishment. Valdez punched his nose in and his eye socket, didn't he? Cheekbones. Yeah, Quick's too tough for his own good. Yeah, very stubborn, very tough man, and he's done Britain proud, but I know he rubs the hardcores up the, the, wrong, the wrong way, doesn't he? Um, some of the things he does are a bit cringe, but he's his own quirky self, isn't he? But yeah, exactly. don't ever let him come, if you own a news agents, don't ever let Scott Quick come in if you've got any crayons in there, because he'll walk out with him. He doesn't pay for crayons. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what Scott Quigg gets every Christmas and he has done since he was free? One of them speed balls that you stand in your bedroom and on your punch. I mean, it's yeah. all the boxing's all he's known. What's he going to do? Oh, man, you probably become a trainer. Yeah, probably. Probably. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it was sad to see, but he'll have got paid last night for that, wasn't he? Probably 80, 100 grand or something. He wouldn't have got that much. I hope so, and I hope Gallagher didn't take too much out of it, because he fucked up. Gallagher will take his 10%, won't he? I think he manages as well, doesn't he? No, uh, Paul Speak manages him. Ah. So, uh, he's done well, Quig. He, should, he, he can hold his head up, he can have a fight. Uh, I think he overachieved massively, massively, to get a pay-per-view and win a world title, and a British as well, come on, he, he, when he started out, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't, if he could have fought that, he'd have thought, wow, wouldn't he, come on, pay-per-view. Yeah, he's done well, uh, he, his career is one that you can't question, you just got to give him his due and go, now mate, well done. Derek well, Chisora well, never won a world title, and, and he's on his second pay-per-view next, isn't he? Yeah, Derek Chisora, oh yeah, he ran into Tyson Fury too early, didn't he? But look, if, if people like Charles Martin have held the belt, uh, Joseph Park have held the belt, Chisora easily belongs to that club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does, yeah. You'd have to say that, but he's a spent force with nine losses, isn't he? No, not at the heavyweight. Look, he's still, he's still able to cause havoc at heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just think that uh, Scott Quigg can hold his head up. He'll probably stay involved in boxing in some capacity. I don't know what, but uh, good luck to him. But uh, I think that he overachieved. But so where where do you see Terry b boxing heading now with the PED issues? What 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 do you think is going to happen now with this? Do you think they're going to have a reform on it? Now? So, so look, I, I know with absolute certainty there are women on this shit. Now, what are they taking? I know there are female boxers and female combat athletes who are on, they don't take, they don't take that much. They probably take about one or two milligrams of testosterone a day, right? Yeah. And like for, for a guy that doesn't sound like a big amount, but yeah. like for women, like that's the difference between being able to train five days a week and not being able to train five days a week. You you measure that out over a career, it's crazy. You know, look at these ladies that that fell for drug tests like like cyborg in MMA. It, it's ridiculous. So and we don't test female sport as aggressively as we should, especially in boxing, we don't because we don't assume that they'd want to cheat. But they do. And they a lot of them do cheat. In terms of the men's side of boxing, it's just got really sophisticated now, Paul. So what happens now is, in the old days, you just take a shitload of steroids, right? On a Monday, you'd inject some nandrolone in your ass and some testosterone in there. Like, like that bodybuilders do. And yeah. then you fail for a drug test because you'd have this massive spike and you'd leave all these metabolites in your system. So now what these guys are doing is they just take really small amounts, maybe twice a day, three times a day, just little micro-injections. 
So when the doping guys come round in the morning, it's all gone. Yeah. It's actually really hard to catch people now because they've, they've turned the doses down and they've just made the injections more frequent. Yeah. I don't know how you're supposed to catch. You're only going to catch the people who are, who are not rich enough to have the whole thing around them. So, you know, if you're the, if, let's say you're a heavyweight champion and you're a multi-millionaire, you can mm. afford the best sort of stuff. You can afford to test your blood every week, but you know mm. how long things stay in your system for. You know when you'll be clean. You know when you'll be dirty. So actually, the, the, the testers will never catch it, never. And so how, do you even, how do you do that? Like, what well, they should do one day, randomly, every registered boxer should be tested. But we haven't got the money to do that. That would tell us who was doping it the one. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. I mean, do you know, do you know back in the day, do you think people were on it? And when there were no testing? Yeah. Of course they were. You have to remember, us. All these guys, right? So, look, if you look at the 60s, the, the bodybuilders, the NFL players, the basketball players, the boxers, all trained in the same gym with the same people. And you're seeing someone add 20 pounds of muscle to their frame. And you go, how do you do this? Well, hey, brother, take these three tablets twice a day and you'll get big like me. And that's what happened. So do I believe guys like Muhammad Ali were taking stuff? Yep. But it probably wasn't even illegal then. But I think they were taking stuff because there was no testing. I think the guys in the 80s were taking stuff because you can't do 15 fucking rounds on just tuna, pasta, and some low-fat mayonnaise. Do you know what I mean? You can't. It's not possible. So these guys were taking stuff. And... You know, it's the nature of competitive sport, Russ. You're always looking for an advantage. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if they were doping their tits off. Even the guys in the 90s. You know, it's all coming out now. I think, and if I'm wrong on this, for apologies, but I think Roy Jones has admitted he was on steroids. Tommy Morrison, we know for certain, was on steroids. Look at all the guys who have failed. Roy Jones failed for steroids in the 2000s. So did James Tony. All of our best guys have failed drug tests. And we still accept them. Yeah. Am I right in thinking the reason Vladimir Klitschko boxed for Ukraine in 96 was that Vitaly had failed the drug test? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. I, I need to say nothing more than that. And what about Floyd? Do you think he took any? There are allegations. There are allegations. It wouldn't surprise me. Nothing surprises me when it comes to boxers. I'd be more surprised if someone was clean at the top level. Would you? Yeah. All right. Then. Because once you've got that money, Paul, you know, Yeah. For a for hundred quid a month, you could order stuff online that will turn you into Superman. Yeah? If they get me yeah, some. Yeah, you might need to remember that. Your birthday's coming up soon, Paul. So you, might, you might need to, to buff up for the summer, mate. <laughs> Uh, moving on then, what do you think about a lot the criticism the Umar IFL Umar or Umar I Umar Ahmed has had? What do you think about all the criticism? I like the, so, so I like the kid, and I think. Give me a second. Let me just sit up for a minute. Because I think for your listeners, it's worth understanding how I know Umar. I remember him as like a seventeen-year-old who just wanted to be involved in boxing. So he'd always ask me, you know, if I if I had anything he could be working on or if he could get involved in the podcast. And what I try and do is I try and hook him up with people who are looking for people. So I've known Umar a long time and I know what the kid's like. He's, it's tricky. He's a sort of kid, he's a really nice lad, right? good kid, stable background, but he's, He's had to do it the hard way. Now, sometimes when you do it the hard way, you're not as sympathetic to people because you're like, I had to suffer. I was an outsider for a long time. And then you get given a platform like IFL where you're visible to tens of thousands of people. It's hard to change who you are. So when people try to set him up with the tweet, and a lot of those tweets were spoofed to tweet for you. Remember I sent you, remember yeah. I sent you the fake tweet? Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of the tweets that people are putting 
I think was Oh, and you were showing me them what you can do with your computers and that, yeah. 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 So, so he got set up. I think only one of the tweets was actually his. Yeah. And so what, what they had to do was they, to, they stood him down. So, he, so you weren't joking that that's, that sort of thing does, that, does happen then? So how do they get them blue things on, on the computer thing then? Wait, wait, it's just that, remember, that's only an image, right? And oh, yeah. what the image looks like. You can, you can program it. Oh God, it's, it's amazing what you can... So Omar's innocent then, is he? Oh, most of it, but there was one of the tweets he did send. I can't remember which one it was. There was one of them that he did send. The About bin there. dippers in Liverpool. Omar said all Scousers are bin dippers, meaning they rob out Something dustbins. Like yeah, it's something like that. I don't think it was... The Hillsborough one I don't think was him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he'd already admitted stuff though at the beginning, hadn't he? Well, he admitted to one. One, were it? All oh, right. Well, yeah, I, I seen him once he grovelling on. Uh, he did a video, did he? Saying apologising and all. You know what I would have said if it were me? I'd have said get fucked. But he had to do. Yeah, but they they made him do that video, Coogan and them. I heard, you know. Yeah. You've got pretty powerful people backing you. And they get a hard time. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, so you've got to kill the story. Even if you don't want to apologise, sometimes apologising just kills the story there. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's just politics. It's not necessarily about admitting. So do we welcome do we well do we welcome Umar back into the fold after after the interview he did with Barry Heard in New York, and he didn't mention what he didn't ask Barry why he was in New York, did he? If you know what I mean. <laughs> that was my. Uh, <laughs> I've got my politician head on today. No, but I imagine if you're Uma, you just don't want to take any risks right now. You just want to get back to normal. Like that's why. That's why Uma was sent. That's why Uma was sent. Did it? Yeah. When those fake tweets were coming out, a lot of people were angry in boxing. Yeah. So they, I think you just have to let let the storm die down before you let him loose again. But look, I think I think the lad's a good kid. Uh, I think he's the best interviewer that I saw. Have he's the best interviewer any of these boxing outlets have? Because, and I think it's probably just because of his inexperience. Even better than Rob Tebbett. Hmm? Even better than Rob Tebbett. Boxing social by views, do they? Um, I've heard allegations that boxing social do buy views. Um, I've been shown the numbers that show that actually you can make a profit from buying views if you know how to play the YouTube system. And I, all I can say to people is, you go and look at it. You know, how do the numbers make any sense? I don't know if they're buying views or not. I don't want to get sued. I'm just saying, if I was a boxing fan, I wouldn't believe the data that people are telling. Yeah, they're all at it, aren't they? All these other YouTube channels tell me cheated. I... This is what I know for certain, Corky, right? If... If one million people will watch Anthony Joshua fight Vladimir Klitschko, that's the size of the boxing market in this country for me. On a yeah. good day, right? Yeah. On a typical day, it's probably about a quarter of that. Yeah. So how the hell are... Uh, I was doing a million views with an Eddie Hearn interview. I know, yeah. Uh, yeah so, no, no, because just look at it logically. If a million people are 
watching Eddie Hearn? Why hasn't he got an endorsement with Rolls Royce? Why hasn't he got an endorsement with Hugo Boss? He has no endorsement. Because I'm like, hold on. You, you've got a million people watching you and you have no endorsement. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why isn't Eddie Hearn driving about like... Gerard Butler's got a. He, he ended up with some sponsorship deal because he he did good numbers on YouTube. Gerald Butler, they were throwing stuff at him, but IFL have, have cheated numbers, aren't they? We Eddie, and uh, if Eddie were doing that many views, he'd have a fucking free car, wouldn't he? He wouldn't have to buy one. Well, if Eddie Hearn was doing that many views, he'd have his own TV show. Of course, he would. That, that's what I mean. That kind of thing, like he'd be like the Eddie Hearn show instead of Jonathan Ross, wouldn't it? Yeah. But Eddie Hearn, every time he comes on IFL, he's a quarter of a million uh, views straight away, but they're all cheats, aren't they? Because he'd be, he'd be a phenomenon if he were doing that good, wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly. If a million people were watching Eddie Hearn every time he spoke on IFL, Jesus, man, he'd be a lot richer than he is now. Yeah, but like I said, they're going to mani manipulate it as the best they can and try and milk it because when Joshua goes he might just jack in and go do concerts but you know what like, I'll, just, I'll, I'll go back to the IFF, uh, to the Uma incident right the thing that Uma did and I love this is it now means that anything screen grab is no longer evidence like, we don't believe that we don't believe screen grab tweets anymore yeah you know we you know, like, like, it's all been discredited. And I think what's happening with these boxing outlets, they're discrediting YouTube. Like, we, don't, we just don't believe it anymore. We're, yeah. we're, we're, look, think about this, right? Think about the logic on this, Porky. You've got Sky telling us there's no money in boxing. That's why everything has to be pay-per-view. That's why we're scaling back our boxing spend, right? Yeah. And then you've got IFL telling us boxing is boomy. Look, Eddie Hearn doing a million views. And you're like, no, no. These two things can't both be true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. How's, how's Hearn doing a million views promoting his own event and his own aren't really doing anything for subscribers? But yet, Matt, we've only got a, fuck, a, a couple hundred thousand on the YouTube channel, but yet Eddie does a million a day. It's crazy, isn't it? The love got has got to be shared out. It can't just be the top, the same twenty people earning money at the top, and yet thousands of people starving. There's something that's got to happen. Government have got to get involved and just even it all out. Even the playing field, aren't they? Because no, it's now the running a mock, eh? Hey? The board need to give up fewer licenses. Yeah, you're probably right, mate. You're probably right. You are I, just, I, just, I think there should be a principle that the, the British Boxing Board of Control only give out 20 licenses a year. What, be, what, so it becomes a closed shop kind of thing? Well, it becomes like, if you're an amateur, you apply to get a license, and then the board have to sift down the hundreds of applications down to the 20 they think will, that will make good pros. I think that's what should happen. Because you can't just be letting... You know, these ex personal trainers and these ex kickboxing boxing instructors become professional boxers. It makes a mockery of the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Very good, uh, very good knowledge as usual, tell. <laughs> very good. I've enjoyed it, mate. I've yeah, enjoyed it. We've had a good old gas. In the morning. You what, pal? I can't believe we just did it at half ten in the morning. Like, wow. I know, yeah. Well, we've got uh, 90 minutes. I'll put that out in a free parter today. Unless you want me to ja get them to jazz it up and put all entrances on it. I just want it straight out. No, we don't need the entrance, mate. Yeah, we're, just, we're we hardcore, really aren't we? Yeah, we've got the voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> 
Brilliant. Well, right, now I'll get this out today then. Uh, what you got planned for the rest of the day, Terry? Oh, mate. No idea. I need to get to the gym, get my, get my running done, get my conditioning done. Good man. Well, I'm pleased. I'm going to cut down on my pork life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, listen, mate. Thanks for uh, thanks for phoning in. It's been a pleasure. Right. I'll speak to you soon. And you're going to Tommy Frank fight, aren't you? Yeah, I'll be on the 27th. Yeah. All right, then. I'll speak to you before then. Anyway, you take care, Terry. Yeah, you too, mate. Bye, mate. Bye. Well, uh, that was Terry uh, Chapadama, who works in banking industry in London. I've known Terry for five years now. A decent kid. Uh, it'd be nice to get Rico on at some stage this week. Uh, so I think that's about it for today. So I'll get these uploaded. These will go out straight away. Uh, there is some videos to come out this week. There's a Dennis Hobson. Uh, video two parter or a one part I think it might be put into one part and uh, Josh Whale I've got a Josh Whale uh, exclusive as well which uh, I'm waiting to see if it's okay to release that so alright because we uh, let's just say it's an interesting interview it raised a few eyebrows but other than that that's about it it's now Sunday, 8 minutes past 12 on a Sunday, so I'm going to get a shower, I'm going to take my dog out, and then I'm going to go take my kids for some Sunday lunch, so of a bawtry. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, shout out to at Karee, at Kareen. Is it? Hang on, let's have a look. At Kareen, Zumba, Zumba with Kareen, I think it's called. Zumba with Kareen. Uh, at Zumba with Kareen or something. I forgot what it's called now, but if you need to do Zumba classes, go get to Kareen's at uh, Oakley and uh, Barbie Nod. All right, she's on Twitter. On Facebook, Kareen Davis on Facebook. Get you sent down there. But uh, that's about it. Shout out SYPS, South Yorkshire Packaging. Uh, my main people behind me. He uh, he's in hospital. He's had a fall. So I hope you're all right, Kev. Uh, going to see a neurological surgeon tomorrow I think so I'll be going up there this afternoon I think 3.30 to visit him uh, that's about it really so a shout out to AJ Hobson at Innovation LR shout out to Den Matt the cabbie from London give the Stig a shout out people keep texting me saying oh what do you think to Stig getting kicked off Twitter for life brilliant isn't it look Stig's not got a criminal record, so as far as I'm concerned, he's a pal, so I'll get off his back. Till otherwise, he's always been right with me. So, that's about it. Shout out to Mick Whalen, Josh, Richard Towers, Cash Alley, Cheyenne Hanson. Shout out to Jessica Robson, hope you're all well, training up at Richard's. That's about it. It's shower time for Big Porky. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. It's the red button underneath to the right. <laughs> I think that's about it, really. Uh, that's about it. Let me put that. Oh. I thought I had some. Oh well. No, so peace out. Keep on trucking. <laughs>